All right, ladies and gents, uh, fun little 1v1 game here. And this is a 1v1 game with two new civilizations. We have the Gurjaras here for Margugu. Margugu, a French player in the top 100. And then here in the red, we've got Sony Toprano, top 100 player from Turkey. And Sony Toprano is playing with the reworked Indians. Uh, with the Dynasties of India's expansion, there's now four Indian civilizations instead of just one. And uh, I say reworked Indians because they have the cheaper villagers per age. And they have uh, very strong camels, though some things are also reworked with the camels. Now, if this ever hits YouTube, we're going to have a little thing that pops up in the little early stages that kind of explains what these civilizations do. But we're going to start actually with the Gurjaras. Now, you got to keep in mind, I'm learning as well. But the Gurjaras, their eco bonus is that they start with two forage bushes. And then they receive some food income for having their, their herdables within their mill. And so, you know, for years, guys, for years, I've been casting Loi the Legends, and I've been talking about how you shouldn't chop straggler trees, and then the devs implement this, and guess what? You should chop straggler trees, because you want that mill to be up as early as possible, and you want to be making use of your eco bonus. Um, now, I was reading some people's conversations in my Discord, while we just had a moonwalking camel, and people within my Discord were saying, uh, before they even got to play the civilizations, this doesn't seem like it's going to be too strong, based on uh, a really cool video done by Spirit of the Law. And uh, to be honest with you guys, I played it. I don't think it's the strongest eco bonus ever, but I think it's way stronger than people think. Because uh, you can pull off some really solid economic uptimes. I will have to see, but my first take right now on this eco bonus is, first off, I love its uniqueness. I think everyone in chat's going to say yeah to that. Uh, I think the uniqueness is nice. I like how it allows you to do different things. Um, I like how we're, we're already talking about making the mill before Lumber Camp, which is different from most civs. And um, I actually think it's going to give this civilization more power than people think in early Feudal Age. So that is before we get to the options of the Gurjaras. Um, but all eight pigs are within here. And having eight pigs is like having, I think, like 1.2... Or 1.3 villagers on food. I don't have the exact math memorized. But I love the build order here from Margu. And I bet you Margu paused there to look at the tech tree too. Because th there's going to be a whole lot of that. Um, now, for the Hindustanis, they have the cheaper villagers in each age. I think it's only 45 villagers or 45 food to make a villager in Dark Age. And it goes to 40 in Feudal, something like that. And our meta right now, uh, we'll talk more about it when we cast Ravidians, is very... Militia Archer Heavy. And so uh, what we have here is the classic little pre-mill Drush for Sony Toprano. It always feels real smooth to do something like this when you are playing with the, uh, well, I want to say Indians, but with the Hindustanis now. Uh, because you save more food. And so it's pretty easy to invest into a couple of Militia to get some map control. You can see the scouts here. And he knows exactly where the opponent is. And that's a really good thing to find as well to see how many are on wood. Um, you know, make the militia get map control, and then you can still save food and go up towards feudal later on. Now, I want to point something out to you guys that just happened, and I don't know if you guys picked up on it, okay? So, Sony Toprano collected 10 gold and then brought in the board with that villager. Now, in the old age of empires, if you clicked another resource when you were holding a, another and a, a separate resource, you would then lose the resource. So, if you had 10 gold and you clicked the board, instantly the 10 gold's gone. But they changed it with Definitive Edition, which was an amazing change, where you don't lose that resource until you actually start collecting another type of resource. And so what he did was he collected the 10 gold, and he brought in the boar, and then he dropped off the gold when he got to the TC. So it just saves a little bit of extra time. Here's the Camel Scout. And that Camel Scout's got to be careful here. 70 HP on a Camel Scout is freaking insane, by the way. 70 HP is a lot. I think eventually that's going to be adjusted, and... Instead of two militia, we've got three militia, and that camel scout was out of position here for Margu. And, like, part of the problem you could maybe say about Gurjara's right now and just learning a new civilization is you're, you're focused a lot at home. You're focused a lot at home to push in some deer. You're trying to figure things out. He didn't get the scouting in when he would have normally wanted to. And this is a great start here for our red player, who's now attacking the scout as Margu has to quick wall everything. And Margu quick walling. Good work from Margu, but also this is... The Drush isn't necessarily designed to kill. This is a build order that is designed to delay, and I think that has been successful so far. 
Oh, also the Camel Scout died. Wow, okay. So yeah, the idea behind this build order now for Sony Toprano is to go up to Feudalage behind this. And, you know, you can think about upgrading this, or you can just, you know, go into some other form of attack. Hey, Max, thank you very much. He's sending you the stars to cover for the month. It's where Facebook wasn't letting me sub to you. Well, hey, I just saw your sub as well. Thank you for that. You did not need to do that, by the way. Thank you for the stars, though. I'm very focused on this cast right now because I want to figure out what works best for these civilizations. You know, on Arabia, you know, you do see a lot of the... Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. You do see a lot of it be execution, right? And Margu, normally the king of execution on these types of maps, is getting massacred by this build order. But on the bright side for Margu, Margu's already making an archery range. And this is... If, if, if this ends up being a Margu victory. A lot of this could be due to the fact that the uptime was so incredibly quick due to this bonus, and the fact that even though he's down a villager, it's like having a villager and a half on food as you have these pigs inside of that mill. It's always interesting, too. It's like, do you want to focus on the mill then? <laughs> like, like, is that a strategy? I think if the mill was more exposed, you could maybe consider that. Now, they also... Guys, they, they changed attack move, and... Some people might say I'm partially to blame for this. Um, they were actually going to make some changes to it regardless of the video. I, it's funny, they they tagged me. I don't know if I can say this, but they tagged me um, in our little like private Discord right after my video. And they were like, yeah, um, we're already like looking into fixes for this and because of all your behind-the-scenes complaints. They changed the attack move a little bit, so I'll be curious to see how Margu can, uh, can utilize any type of like patrol or attack move mechanic um it definitely feels like the units are slower off the attack move attack whereas before they were like gliding and it was it was not so much the attacking it was the gliding before and yeah margu's still doing a great job here margu's range unit micro is incredible and now you look at sony toprano and sony toprano is going to go double range here so i just want to compare the economies real quick you know we've got 24 eco versus 26 looks like margu had some some idle time We've got a tiger going in on the attack. Man, living in India must be rough. I love how the Arabia generation gave us tigers, because I'm pretty sure tigers are definitely a thing in India. And while Sony Toprano might have been unhappy about the not having any control over the last few moments, as two range is ready to make ranged units, and it's making use of the cheaper villagers still. So it does have to track this, of course. But... Uh, you know, we'll see what type of damage Margu is able to get in here. Interesting little Arabia game. So, so chat, you're going to have to help me out here. I I don't have a way of, while using Capture Age, bringing up all the information for the civilizations for myself right now. So I'm trying to think about the unique units. So I think the Hindustanis, I believe the Hindustanis have the, uh, it's almost like an Eagle Warrior. It's an anti-archer unique unit. And you're going to, again, have to forgive me because I don't know the name. I don't know if Sony Toprano is going to go that route. Uh, both players kind of just passing each other right now. We've got sneaky armies on both sides. There's a very good chance that both players expected. Well, Margu probably was expecting this. I'm not sure if Sony Toprano was expecting this because Margu did not attack the wall villager. And, oh man, these archers. Talk about revenge. Talk about revenge. Don't you dare militia me, buddy. You gotta, you gotta kill the villagers here. Okay, I think Margu knew this one was a free kill. And went for the other kill. That was actually really good. And now Sony Toprano forced to react here. Okay. Which civilization gets the Yurumi? I, again, forgive me. It's slipping my mind. It might actually be the... Oh no, the Gujaras have the, um, the Chakram Thrower. Yes. So it, and then the Bengalis have the Ratha, and then so I guess it would be the other civilization we haven't discussed yet. Okay, so looking for this army, looking for this army. Sony Soprano feels the need to do some damage, is running right in towards it. Just now getting Fletching, though, so very late on that. And guys, look at the food economy for Margu. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of farming. Obviously, you've got the berries, but everything has felt pretty smooth after that villager loss. And I, I think, like, Half of this isn't even the income now, as Margu's going to take some losses. Half of this comes down to the fact that you can go up so quick with that build order. It was like 18 or 19 pop feudal, and that's not unique. Like, or sorry, it is unique, but I mean, 
It's not like other civs can't do it, but there's only a short list of civilizations where you can justify it. Like Mongols, for example. Mongols, I think you can justify because of the hunt bonus. Khmer, maybe, because you don't have to make a barracks before an archer range or, or whatever you want to make. This is a good game. And I'll tell you what, like Margu has, has definitely gained the lead economically, but Margu does not have the lead with military anymore. I'll, that is a lot of military coming here from Sony Toprano. And I, I will show you guys games where the unique units are utilized in realistic scenarios. Uh, Margu is saying there's lag. There obviously is a new patch. Every time there's a new patch, there seems to be issues with that, which is, well, it's expected at this point, but it is also frustrating. I saw some people in my chat here at the start of the stream saying they can't play the game since the new patch. Um, But I mean, you know, Margu is going to take this fight, but Margu cannot comfortably really go up to the castle age without any, you know, solid military control. Unfortunately for Margu, or, or unfortunately as the villager goes down, but fortunately the eco's there to make a lot of skirms. But you've got to think with the walls behind this for Sony Toprano that the eco can be sorted out a little bit. It's a lot on wood right now for Sony. Like, that's got to be halved into farms. And the mill is there. So I think Sony's probably just microing right now. Got a scout over here as well looking around. All right. So I'm liking what we're seeing here from Sony's micro. The macro is slipping. This definitely, I was just going to say... Feels like a game where if you know your macro is slipping, you go for the market. And Margu has also gone for the market already. Okay, you know what I don't like? I'm going to pause this right now and ask for your input. I don't like the alerts of so-and-so is being attacked by this. I don't like that. Is there a way for me to adjust that? Okay, this might be it. Combat events... Okay, perfect. Okay, I can hide it. We're, we're good. I, I don't think that's necessary. When I'm casting, I don't need to... I don't need those alerts. That's an in-game thing. I don't need that as a caster. The chat, obviously. The market, that's all very relevant and very important. But the other stuff can be removed. Unless I'm missing everything, which, you know, happens from time to time. All right, so... Margu, I think, has benefited greatly from the faster uptime. I think Margu is has been able to do that due to the Gurjara food eco bonus. Hasn't even needed to pull out any pigs. I've seen some players pull out the pigs at certain stages. Hasn't needed to do that at all. Is getting hit on the wood line and is only going to be opening castleage with what looks to be skirmishers. Now, is there a chance that Margu wants to go for something else here out of these ranges? Wow, great micro. Very good micro. Wow. And the uptime is very delayed for Sony Soprano, who is walled and is not on stone, though the stone is very exposed. What's up, Baskets? Hey, 90 did you see they changed resource depletion graphics through Fog of War? Wait, in the game? Because if they did, that's awesome. Is that for wood or is that stone and gold as well? Because I've been asking for that for like two years. Yeah, you shouldn't be able to scout... Like, you see this? You shouldn't be able to scout the gold at minute 5, and then at minute 30, look and know if they're taking it. That's really bad. Players no longer able to see chopped trees and resource depletion graphics. Through. Okay, nice. That's really good. That is a really good change. Actually, I'm more excited about that than I am the whole DLC. Honestly. <laughs> so, I think... And that's not even a knock to the new DLC. I, I'm more excited about that than anything. So I think, you know what? Hype over, guys. <laughs> Hype over. Commentary ruined. Not important anymore. Look at these sneaky little rats, dude. Trying to hit the wood lines. Not fighting the main forces at all. This is so good. This is something that, that I don't think Sony's going to notice because he's reacting to the other wood line. They hit it at the same time, and he does he does notice. Just a little late. He's got his army back here. He wants those pigs. He wants the pigs. He doesn't really want the pigs. He wants villagers. But maybe he thinks the villagers are pigs, you know? Maybe maybe he hates this. Uh, maybe he hates the Gujaras that much. Little Indian civil war here. The civil wars can get nasty. Elite skirm on the way. Uh, no crossbow, though. But with Bodkanero in, you're still going to see villagers die. And what a great game here we have. 
And Ballistics is on the way for Margu. I'm sure Margu is happy about that. But, like, what hurts Margu at times is the complete lack of walling. Margu obviously benefited from playing very open, very aggressive, but now has lost a lot of villagers and is going to get pushed back by Elite Skirmisher. Now, the eco efficiency has certainly gone down for both of them. You can see the worker efficiency last minute has dipped, and I think it's going to continue to be worse. Uh, for uh, for Sony Toprano, because Sony Toprano is not going to be able to do much here. Check it out, people. We have the Elephant Archers out of the Archer ranges. And these are the instances where I think these things are going to be useful. Because they were always good for, for the old Indians. They were always good if you could mass them against ranged units. But the problem was you needed a castle, and they were expensive. They've lowered the cost. They have lowered the base HP of these units. And while they do cost food, you know, you could conceivably... Just not, like, a lot of civs are going to go a couple archer ranges and a stable and mix in a couple knights for food and gold. You can conceivably just stay on range units and just skip that all together. Now, Elite Skirm's not great, okay? Elite Skirm's not, not fantastic against this many, but Elite Skirm's still something I think you should shoot for. It's really complicated, though, because if you try and go for monks, then there's Skirm... If the opponent's already on range units, they can just snipe the monks with the other range units. So I'm going to say right now, I think these elephants are probably going to see a change at some point. Like, it, there's no way they, they're they going to implement these elephants and they're going to be perfectly balanced. They're either going to be too weak or too strong. I don't know. But I will say that as I say these words, nah, the elite Skirm's still not doing enough here. He needs to get the second armor. <laughs> He needs to get the second armor. Sony Toprano trying to be sneaky again. And Margu all over him right now. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting because the elephants also are going to do much better against Siege. Like, what do you make against elephants and skirmishers in theory, right? Like, I guess you want to make a mix of units, of course. It's a little tricky, but I, I really do think at some point, like maybe a couple months from now, we're going to see a couple tweaks to these elephants. Because it's a big change. It's a very big change to allow a unit like this to be produced out of the archery ranges. Okay, Margu, 52 villagers. It is 52 villagers for Sony Toprano. We do have better eco upgrades for Sony Toprano. Margu, though, I think has the much better military. You can see it with the army value. But let's see. I mean, we've got we've still got Elite Skirm. But I guess you, if you use your own Elite Skirm against the Elite Skirm, it kind of cancels it out a little bit. These elephants are absolute tanks. I talked about monks. I kind of, I think it's a good idea. Obviously, right here you fight. You know, this is a fight you're going to win. But I think it would actually be a good long-term idea to maybe even just add a monastery at home if you're making these elephants because those things are very tanky and you could just heal them back up. Argu, adding the third town center now. You're starting to see the, the micro slip a little bit just because the players are adding economy, right? Like right here, adding economy, Sony Toprano probably doesn't want to be fighting uphill like this. And maybe someone can remind me of the cost of these elephants. I know I should be bringing the knowledge to you guys, but uh, hard for me. I am, I am a person who, who benefits from repetition and studying. I, I'm not someone who has ever done well with just a couple weeks of preparation. Give me a couple years and I'm good to go. <laughs> Especially because I, I also, what's important as far as like teaching you guys things with the game is, is applicable practices, applicable situations, which takes months and months and months and weeks and weeks and weeks. And it takes, it, it just takes time. And so that's going to be it for me as well. The elite skirms are actually doing a pretty good job damage wise though against these elephants. A little bit better than I expected initially. So I think going for just these elephants would be a little... A bit much. I think it's 90. Okay, you're saying now 90 food, 70 gold. That's not cheap. It is definitely not cheap. What a game we have here. So, are we going to see more unique units is my question. I feel like it would kind of make sense for the Gurjaras to... Uh, or, or, sorry, it would kind of make sense for the Industrians to go for their unique unit if there is a continuous amount of archers because... It's, it's so confusing, and the first time I played with the Hindustri Hindustanis, sorry, Hindustrians, as well, um, with the Hindustanis, I didn't realize, but it looks like a Spearman. It looks like it'd be good against Cav. 
It's not. It, it's very deceiving. It, it is not... It's designed to confuse people who go off looks of the units, because believe me, it is an anti-archer unit. I made it against elephants and camels and was shocked at how poor they were. Oh, look at look at the game since look at the experience though. Redemption's brought in. And the monks are gonna be helpful against more elephants. Also, they're helpful against the siege. Very well played there from Sony Toprano. So now you're starting to think about it and you're like, what do I make? If I'm Gerjaras. Do I go do I go on stone yet? He hasn't gone on stone. He's not thinking about his unique unit. If I recall, I, I don't think their stable tech tree is fantastic, but I, they should get light cav. And I, I like the siege idea, right? But maybe just a couple minutes too late. We'll have to see. I mean, he, he forward siege, what I like about this type of a position is even if you don't push with it, you're holding him off of that gold. He, it puts him under a lot of pressure to try and push up this hill. Obviously, the monks are going to have to come out here. That's a big shot. He tried to split, was a little late. And yeah, he's, he's definitely having some trouble grouping up his units right now. The big, big mishaps are happening here for Sony Soprano. But there is a monk here. And the Manganel like fired at minimum range? Or below minimum range somehow? And okay, he deletes it. As he probably should have there. Now this is where you have to foresee a tech switch from your opponent if you're Sony Soprano. You have to foresee a tech switch. You're making monks and you're making skirmishers. Which is just asking the opponent to go for stable units. Okay, that was very unfortunate that that monk didn't get a conversion. I think at this point he just has to back up. You don't want to run out here. The light calf switch could hurt you. Or something I'm going to have to practice pronunciations for. The Shravamsha rider is on the way. Now this unit in its description dodges shots. Which is a very weird description. And those elephants, again, so good against Siege. And... Okay, one was converted. He wants to drop a castle here. There's more Siege on the way, but there's more Monks. He gets a shot off. That should be converted. Okay, so this thing here, guys. I, I toyed around with it. I played a few 1v1s with this unit. It says it dodges shots. I don't know how good it is against Monks, though. I don't know if it's like Light Cap if it resists conversions. My goodness, is it speedy. A lot of those monks converted the same unit. Armor-wise, it's not great. HP-wise, it's not great. I think Margu's just trying to make it, but I don't know if it's really a good unit to make in this situation. Now, uh, I, I would have preferred like have there. It doesn't cost gold either. These units here only cost 20 gold, which is nice. It's funny how reds... Riders here have been more effective than blues were, and the castle goes up. Like, you just cannot make archers against Industrians when they start getting castles up. It's a bit like, uh, you know, like, going a lot of archers against Mayans or Aztecs or Incas. You gotta be careful because they have those eagles, right? So the Ghulam, let me show you the stats. So the right stat here is Pierce Armor. And the left is melee, right? So their melee armor is really bad. But their pierce armor is amazing. Also, is this unit on... This unit is so quick. And, like, it has to be good against just skirms, right? I, I still feel like Sony Toprano is moving too far out here. That is a lot of them. Even though I don't think they're the best... Uh, they were the best option earlier. Uh, we have the spam from Margu. And they're not, they're not expensive, guys. Holy crap, are they fast. And this is like, y your opponent has their gold now. So you want to keep them off the stone and the other gold. That's what this is about. Also, it's a bit of a test for Margu to see how good these things are. But you need to get plus two armor here before these things become really effective. I'm not sure the Castle Age version of this is really that good. Like right there. Okay, now, now we're not seeing good numbers, but I think Sony Toprano is, is kind of falling... Getting a bit overwhelmed right now with the situation. And we have a castle here for Margu. The spam of these units are insane. I don't know what their production speed's like. Maybe they produce a little bit faster than some other things. But 8 plus 7. Oh, they have a charge attack too. Is that what that is? I'm confused by that. Or is that their normal 8 plus 2? Yeah, they have 
their first attack has a little bit of a charge too. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the whole charge mechanics in Age of Empires 2. They added that with one of the, I think it's the Yurumi Swordsman, which based on my buddy Spirit of the Laws assessment is broken um, if you get to them. Oh, that's the shield? Yeah, but it's there's definitely an attack difference though. Unless unless maybe he had he converted one back or something. But it said eight plus two on one of them, so I gotta keep an eye on that. Oh boy, we've got the armored elephants, people. Now they don't get rams, but they get armored elephants, and here they go. Now it's worth pointing out that you can convert these things, but you have to be next to them, unlike another elephant where you'd convert from distance. And I think Margu is just is just gonna win this th through sheer production at this point. And Margu knows it. Look, look at this. Margu coming in. And these elephants are going to go in and take out this castle. The Ghulam, it, again, it looks like a unit. And maybe Sony Soprano doesn't know. It really looks like a unit, which would be good against, uh, you know, what we're seeing out here. I don't think it's that great if melee units are involved. And maybe it gets a bit stronger later on. Maybe, maybe you need to have a mix, right? Like, maybe... With only 65 HP, maybe you've got to have this unit combined with something that's good against melee. So, uh, I don't know. In theory, you could go, like, Ghulam, which is anti-archer, and then you could go Camel. Because uh, they have very good Camels. Camel would have actually been the play here for Sony Toprano, but he was under too much pressure. So. Okay, so they produce two sec 20 seconds faster than a camel. So a lot of things to figure out here, right? A lot of things to figure out here with these uh, sieves. Uh, Arabia is the most regularly played map at a high level. I'd say the most competitive land map. And you get to see kind of what sieves are able to do in each age. I My take on Gurjaras, granted we didn't get to see you know much of the unique unit. There's also unique text, which let's be honest, I, I forget all of them. So we're going to just tab into the game right now. Um, so I think this is where they had the cheaper units, right? Yeah, okay, so I played with this sieve. And I really feel like this sieve is kind of comparable to the Malay, if you know the Malay. Because the units themselves don't feel the strongest, necessarily. Um, and their tech tree is a little limited. And that would, that would describe the Malay as well. Like, for example, they don't get champion. They don't get Arbalest. That's that's awkward. That's awkward. Their stable's good. And then their unique unit is probably a bit situational because it's an infantry unique unit. Um, anyways, overall, like what's good about the Civ, I think, is their eco at the start. Uh, the mounted unit's dealing plus 50% bonus damage. is definitely no joke. You know, it's something you got to pay attention to. But, you know, military units costing 25% less food feels very, very strong and natural to go for in these situations where... You want to go for all-in pushes. I'm excited to see kind of what the Gajaras can do over time. Um, I, I have to hand it to the devs. I don't think that uh, the Civ is OP. I do not think the Civ is OP, and I'm very happy about that because there have been many instances where Civs are implemented and they're completely overpowered. I also do not think that this Civilization is the weakest Civ in the game. I, th I think the Civ is going to have some cool stuff. So that's good. And there's obviously a lot of things we're going to have to figure out with this civilization. Now, for Sony, we didn't get to talk about it as much. But the Hindustanis, I think, are actually a bit better overall. Um, they made some changes, which I think are... I, I, I was shocked they made some of the changes here. So Camel Riders attacking 25% faster is no freaking joke, guys. And if you remember what Indians used to have... Indians used to not have, sorry, the final armor on their stable, okay? So they did not have the final armor on their stable. Now they do. Um, and they have their camels attacking 25% faster. And they get Imperial Camel. So, like, this, that change alone, let's just say team games, makes them so much stronger than what they were. And they were already fairly strong getting to Imperial Camel before. Also, their gunpowder units have additional pierce armor, which is new, if I'm not mistaken. And then Shatagni gives hand cannons plus two range as opposed to plus one. So, with cheaper villagers, stronger Imperial camels. <laughs> yeah, basically stronger Imperial camels. Additional range in their hand cannons. The Sif's no joke. The Sif's no joke. But I think in this particular game, it was a little tough for uh, 
for Sony Soprano to keep up with the pace of things. And Margu is just a really aggressive player. So we didn't get to see like a boomy game where we get to see the options compared against each other. Um, I don't like that hand cannons are going to have the same range as arbs. From a, a boomer, uh, I played this game forever perspective. That said, it does kind of make sense because... Actually, they'll have more range than Arb, won't they? What's the base range of a hand? I forget. It is kind of funny, though, because you'd think that guns would actually outrange bow and arrow. <laughs> so I suppose, like, it, it's not, like, the most radical of changes, and we'll just have to see what happens. I think it actually makes them much stronger on maps like Arena because hand cannons are kind of like a niche unit. Not so good on open maps like this. Yeah, nine range hand cannons, I think, outranges an Arbalest, right? Because Arbalest have eight range. Which feels wild to me. All right. GG, let's look at the stats here. I hope people enjoyed this. My my goal here with these sieves, so today, um, and I felt like this was worthy of an upload because we're just talking a lot about the sieves and it was a good, interesting game. My goal for you guys is I'm going to find interesting games where these civilizations are utilizing their bonuses more than, you know, me just like casting live games and seeing what we find. And I'll bring them to the table and then we can have discussions on it. Um... Might not be this week, but maybe next. I think that's the goal. Um, again, 8.53 Feudal Age time. And in in the present day meta where you want to be aggressive, even if you lose the vill, which is what happened here to Margu, you still have like a vill and a half on food because of the pigs inside the mill. That's no joke. That's no joke. And, and keep in mind, the villager died because of a good play from Sony Toprano, but because Margu didn't have it walled in. So if you don't take that damage, you're up that fast, and you kind of have a vill working over your opponent. That is, that's pretty strong, I think. I don't know if Gurjaras are necessarily strong with, with all their units compared to some other civs in the game. But again, compare it to Malay, where you can advance to the next stage faster, use the power spike of the early age, and then have cheaper units over time. I think it could be pretty good if you want to play like Margu did, spam those units, and be aggressive.